Hey, yo, what's up, ladies? This is Alex from My Attraction 2.0, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about eight things that a man would do only if he loves you. Now, I'm not a big fan of making, you know, like eight signs or eight things that you got to do, you know, like stuff like that. But I feel like this is actually kind of useful because it'll help you guys understand the signs that you guys are going to get from guys, and it'll show you whether you should commit or whether you should um, consider backing off. So. The first thing is when the first one of the biggest signs that a guy actually likes you and is becoming more interested in you is when he becomes interested in your parents. I mean, I promise you this, man. Your parents are not that interested. I'm interested, in, okay? And there's no other reason why a guy will be interested in your parents other than he's, he's interested in you and, it's ha and it has and has a future in mind with you. That's what usually what that means. For the most part, a guy when he's in love with a woman, he'll try to gain her. He'll try to gain your, his parents' her parents' validation um, because he feels like he has a future with her. So that's pretty much it. Um, the second thing is you go on a trip together. And I know this sounds pretty cliche, but if a guy invites you over to, if a guy asks you to go on a trip with him, I mean, it means that he either is considering. I mean, is he's he's almost at that stage of loving you, or he really wants to spend time with you. You see, um, most of the time you don't just go on trips together with someone who you just met. Well, unless you know, you guys are there only for physical reasons. But if it's a, if it's any relationship and the sex has gone down, and he still invites you to come out on trips with him, it means that he values your company, and it means that it goes beyond the physical. It means that he may be loving you. That's why pretty much that means. I promise you, like most of my friends, they don't go on trips with women like, who they kind of like. They go and chase with women who they really love. You see, um, number three, um, he includes you in his future plans. Um, whenever, whenever you don't really love somebody, you don't really talk about the, you don't really envision a future with them. Whenever you think about your future, you just see yourself and your only self. Um, but when you want say something with someone and you really love them, you will naturally create those um, mental projections where you guys are together in the future. Um, if you if you make plans in your mind, you're gonna try to include them as much. So you'll notice that when a guy has feelings for you, he'll try to include you in his plans, or he'll try to accommodate his plans for you. You see, so if you if you guys if you guys talk if you talk about how you're going to be in Canada, you know what I'm saying, and he's actually going to be living in South Africa, he'll. Try try to find a way to either find a way to meet find a middle ground per se because when somebody really loves someone they really want to stay together for the long run and so he'll naturally plan those things out you see and i remember that happened to me where when i was talking to this girl she she would plan to um you know to work in florida and whatnot and i really i mean i really liked her we really loved her and as a result i actually conspitulated and actually try to find ways to actually live closer to her you see and so we talked about kind of stuff but I would not have done that if it was just a superficial um, attraction that I have for her. If I just liked her, but rather than instead of loving her, you see. So that's what usually happens: is that you are included in his future, and he talks about her, and even gets upset whenever you talk about something that doesn't include him in the in your own future. All right. Um, number four, he consistently texts you and responds to you. Um, and I don't, I know this is kind of obvious, but it, it goes to say that when, in my experience, whenever I love someone, I always text him in the morning. Um, I always try to text him at night. Um, I always try to be the person who she hears first and who she hears last from. That usually tends to happen. But when you just like somebody, I mean, generally speaking, when you love somebody, you're just obsessed about them. It's an obsession. That's what that is. It really is an obsession. And the obsession manifested in you wanting to communicate with them as much as you can. All right? So that's one of the things that happens when you love someone. Oh, hey, pretty girl. Um, let me see. Number five. He wants to spend time alone with you. I know this is kind of obvious once again. But... You want to think about these signs and put them together in one thing. Don't just look at them individually. He's like, oh, you know, he, he asked me to hang out with him and watch Netflix. No, 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 I'm not talking about that, girl. I'm talking about he actually spends quality time with you, like alone. I mean, without having to be sex. He just really would like to spend time with you. Um, most guys, when they just kind of like somebody, they won't spend a lot of time together alone. You know, or even better yet, he'll choose to hang out with you over his friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually goddamn big, you know. When you when you're splitting friendships, that means he loves you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? 
Um, he'll choose not to spend time with his friend, to spend time with you, exactly. Um, number six, he gets jealous at the thought of you being with somebody else. Um, a healthy dose of jealousy never goes, um, a healthy dose of jealousy never is, and but there's nothing wrong with that, you see what I'm saying? It's actually pretty good to have a healthy dose of jealousy. And when somebody has more than just feelings for you, they actually kind of get jealous whenever you, whenever he thinks about you being with your ex or somebody else. Now, I'm not talking about over possessive jealousy but i'm just talking about a subtle dose of jealousy where you kind of like it's kind of cute and adorable you know i mean you should always you should always be careful you know, whenever you see abrupt jealousy whereas where he gets overly emotional and all that to the point that he cannot control himself just definitely look out for that and you should de you should definitely not think that's cute because that isn't um number seven you have a, when you have an upper door policy like literally when you just come to his place anytime you want to you know when you guys assume that you guys are gonna sleep over each other or if you guys hang out together i mean that's a sign that he really loves you because then that just means that he wants to spend time with you as much as you do but when you feel like you have to ask him then that's a, an extremely good reflection of how of, of how the dynamics of the relationship is you know what i'm saying so for the most part when when a guy really has certain emotions for you he's gonna naturally want to spend time with you i mean he's gonna want to naturally spend time with you to the point that you're gonna feel him telling you you could stay over you see you're just gonna feel that comfort yeah unless he likes to you know have his own bed to himself that's what usually happens and, and i'm telling you just from experience these are just things that a guy will do if he only loves you you know what i'm saying um number seven um, he gives you all, he, now this is actually pretty big, he gives you well thought out gifts, all right? Um, usually when, when you just have superficial attraction with someone, you don't notice the details of them. You don't really think creatively to, to, to put a smile on their face. You really just don't do that. But when you have actual affection for somebody, you're actually going to go out of your way to try to find a way to put a smile on their face. And usually when it comes time to prove yourself, it's, it's all during the holidays or it's their birthday or just a random gift, they're going to give you a gift that's not just a gift card, but something that's really well thought out. That's what usually happens. You don't just give a well thought out gift to a random person. You give a, you give a thought out gift to somebody that you really love. Um, and, and, you know, and let me tell you something, man. If he's giving you a well thought out gift and he doesn't love you, he's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's a good person but the one thing you have to the, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that don't just look at these signs pick one and be like oh he loves you no 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 look at everything you know look at everything and try to and try to find as many of them as you can and also realize that sometimes a guy may, may even show all of these signs and he may not really love you you see he may show all of these signs but he just that's just how he is wherein some guys just have na that natural tendency to be a very to be a very loving person Love, loving individual but at the same time be able to detach where they have high intention but low attachment you see so you just gotta be careful with that and always keep an open mind and realize that a lot of times your own insecurities is what causes you to see beyond to see beyond what's there and maybe it may even make you think that a person loves you when in reality he's not even giving you one scintilla of one scintilla of a signal that he loves you all right so always keep an open mind always be asking yourself maybe i'm wrong but at the same time when you see these kind of signs take them from a grain of salt let his actions let his actions speak for you and do not try to force it out of him, which is to say, don't try to make him tell you, tell you he loves you. Just try to uh, let his actions speak for themselves by how much he pays attention to you and how much he really wants to spend time with you, all right? Anyways, this is Alex from MindfulAttraction.org. I hope you guys have a good day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15, 16, holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create will be destroyed by the outside because your, your, fem, your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal-oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know, it, you know. Now the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one would this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness, 
healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace and even the dress code. They, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you could read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really, most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video, right there. You'll see it, and you could pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.